Welcome back to Big Engineers where engineers come to learn. This is me, Baro Krishna. In this video, we're going to talk about crucial topic of modern manufacturing, defect analysis using data analytics. Whether you are an engineer or a manufacturing owner, this video is going to be very crucial. In manufacturing, defects can lead to loss of revenue, production delays, and even damage to brand reputation. Traditionally, identifying these defects was time consuming and heavily dependent on human expertise. But that's changing rapidly with data analytics. Modern manufacturing collects huge amount of data from machines, sensors, sensors and quality control systems. Now we're going to understand how this data is used to predict, identify and even prevent defects. This is done using data analytics. Let's dive into a project and see step by step procedure how we actually going to do it. The first step of the process is always data collection and data collection is done by using sensors and control systems. The second step of the process is basically data analytics. Now, so I'm basically taking this example from predicting manufacturing defect data sets from Kegel.com and then we're going to download this data and try to do some uh, Power BI analytics and to see what is affecting it, what is given here. Now you can see the different variables description that is given here. I'm going to link this link in down in the description. You can download directly from Kegel itself. Now I have downloaded the file and this is the data that I'm seeing right now. Let's uh, go here. Now let's understand different uh, columns that are given here. Now I can see that they have 3240 entries and 17 columns so far. They are also given about different columns like let's say production metrics, production volume, number of units produced per day. Now you can see the production volume. These are the number of uh, units production per day. Now you can take your time, go ahead, read through all these things. Supply chain logistics, quality control and read defects, maintenance and downtime, inventory management, workflow productivity and safety, additive manufacturing, different things. Now I'm going to use Power BI to visualization. The first thing first, I can go hit on a blank report and I'm going to import the data set. I'm going to click on uh, Workbook Excel and import it. Um, I'm just going to wait for a bit until it gets connected and import all the data. Once the data is connected, uh, this is the data that I want. I'm going to hit on load. So the, all the data is been loading right now. So once everything is loaded, now I'll start uh, looking into the data, transform it, etc. The first thing that I'm going to look at is defect status. Now it ranges from either one or zero. I want to understand how many ones are there and how many zeros are there. Obviously they have said that one is means high defects, zero means low defects. So I need to understand, I need to understand the mean of it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to understand what is the average. So it is given that they have around 3,240 rows. So I want to understand on an average, how many ones are there and how many zeros are there? What is the average of this defect status? For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a measure saying that average, average defect. So it is basically average of defects. Where is, where is my defects, defect status? And this is, I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to see that. Let's create that one. I'm going to input card and let's input the average. All right, so we have 0.84 average defect. What does that mean? The mean of a defect status is around 0.84, indicating that the significant portion of entries are classified as high defect instances. Now, this is something very alarming. Now I'm going to understand production volume and how it is affecting the quality of the overall production. The next thing what I'm trying to understand is, is there any correlation between production volume and production cost? So what I have done, I have done a scatter chart. Uh, with respect to production volume and the production cost. Now and so I can see that production volume varies from 100 to 1000 per day and the production cost range from 5000 to 20000 dollars. Now I don't see a correlation here uh, even if we increase the production value the cost of production is neither significantly higher or lower. So that's what I've written here. The production cost average tent around 12,000 across various production volume levels. So average is around 12,000. I have cre created a trend line as well. This isn't a clear positive correlation between higher production volumes and increased production cost. Production cost does not rise proportionally with production volumes. The next thing I want to understand is defect rate. So if once you can see that defect rate is from 0.5 to 5 defects per 1000 units. So I want to understand how these defects are distributed. So what I did was I created bins and created into 0 to 5 and I have seen that average is around 2.75 defects per 1000 units which ranges from 0 0.5 to 5. So 0 0.5 to 5 they are ranging but I don't see a pattern much. Now okay let's understand defect rate with respect to the production volume because what my assumption was if the production volume increases the number of defects might also increase. That was my assumption but that is not the case here as well. You can see that across all 9 defect bins count of defect range from 330 
to 376. There is no, if that was the case, uh, as the production volume decreases, the defect should be high. But I don't see that. So there is no direct correlation that I defect rate uh, with respect to volume or any other trend that I can see in the defect rates. The next thing I want to understand is quality score. So quality score, if you can see, they are overall quality assessments. Now it's in the percentages. It ranges from 60 to 100 percent. Now I can see that uh, I wanted to check if there is any correlation here with respect to let's say 60 is it high, 95 it's low. But I can see it's pretty average. Even if I create, I create a trend line here, there is nothing much that I can see. That is okay. There are more number of uh, uh, defects at 95% here, or more number of 95% defects, and less number. There's I can't see. And the mean is around 80, 80%. 80% is the mean that I am looking at. So quality rare score ranges from uh, from 60 to 100 with a central tendency around 80%. Now that's what we can understand. Now this chart also explains pretty much the same thing. The mean is around 79.96 and the range is from, uh, from this point to this point. Okay. Now one other thing I'm trying to understand is, is there any correlation between the quality score and the volume? Now here as well, I don't see any significant thing that to say that with the higher volume, the quality score is increasing or decreasing. So all across a quality score bends, the count of the qualities range from 379 to 342. Uh, no much significant thing say I can uh, I have figured out here. The next thing I want to understand is basically delivery delay. Now delivery delay is the average delay in delivery. It ranges from 0 to 5. So I have uh, created an average which is around 2.56 the average delivery delay that is happening and it ranges from 0 to 5 nothing significantly sticks out that okay five, 5 delivery days is the highest one no there is no much a thing that uh, sticks out now this chart also basically says the same similar thing delivery delay has a mean approximately 2.6 days uh, with the most uh, delay falling between 0 to 5 not much in analysis that i could do from the delivery delay so the next thing i am looking at is basically maintaining hours and downtime percentage now maintaining hours is number of hours spent on maintenance per week and the second thing is this percentage of productive downtime this is range from 0 to 5 percent and this is range from 0 to 24 percent now this is where i found something very interesting first of all i understood what is the average maintenance hours it's around 12 hours and the down percentage is around 2.5 percent the next thing i wanted to understand is how is the maintenance hours progressing in the sense like now at uh, maintenance hours of 5, how much is the um, uh, sum of maintenance is 660. Now this is gradually incre increasing. Now I wanted to also understand like, okay, maintenance hours are increasing that I can see, but let's understand with respect to defect status because uh, one is high defect status, zero is low defect status. For that reason, what I did, I did another bar chart. Now this da dotted line is basically same as this above one. But this pink one is basically sum of maintenance hours of zero. Zero means less defect. Now, what is one thing is very significant here. If the maintenance hours is less than 10, the defect status is zero. But as the maintenance hours are increasing, now yeah, there is a something that happened between 10 maintenance hours and 11 maintenance hours. If it is less than 11, the maintenance hours is less than 11, the defect status is zero. Now, this is a very good insight. Now, with that being said, I also wanted to understand some of the other things. Now, what I did, I did uh, a line chart with the downtime percentages. Uh, I created bins from 0 to 4 and sum of production volume with respect to production volume. One thing I can see is in the downtime percentage is increasing, the production volume is increasing. So that is one significant thing because that means at a particular stage the production volume is increasing with respect to that means there's some sort of maintenance that might be happening and which with with which we're increasing production volume and I also wanted to understand the with the maintenance hours. So as the maintenance hours are increasing, maintenance hours are increasing, the production volume is decreasing, production volume is decreasing. Now this is something inversely proportional. That one thing that might have happened here is the machines may be getting old and their major maintenance hours. And with the major maintenance hours, the production volume is decreasing because a lot of time is spent on the maintenance hours. Now to confirm this, I want to do something else called key influencers. Now here as well, one thing I wanted to understand is how is the defect status with respect to production volume and maintenance hours. Now here I can see that the maintenance hours is more when it is 2.6. The maintenance hours is more than 10, the defect status is increasing. Now this is directly what we understood here. If it is greater than 10, it is increasing. 
The next one what I understood is production volume. Production volume is more than 802. The defect rate is also increasing. Now I have written down the reasons what it might be happening. The one of the major reasons here is the multiple types of maintenance, reactive and preventive maintenance. Now what they are, what I'm assuming is they are doing a reactive maintenance. That is a reason when they're and there are old old machinery that is that is might be the reason they are spending more amount of time on maintenance and with which they are decreasing the volume and increasing their defect rate as well this i would say is a significant breakthrough in terms of analyzing why a defect is happening now we all also figure out uh, the other metrics as well and see if we can find out any other things next thing i want to understand is basically the safety incidents now i can see that safety inc incidents ranges from 0 to 9 and then averaging around 4.5 now this is what I have written here as well. But something that's, uh, uh, that stuck out for me. So I was doing a safety incidents and sum of safety incidents. You can see that at 9, this 9 safety incidents, the sum of safety incidents is also the highest. You can see the gradual increasing here. Now this is uh, not a very good sign. Then I wanted to correlate with the production volume. Is it correlating with if higher production volume is creating higher uh, safety incidents? So I wanted to see that. Now I can see that from uh, around 5 it is increasing. As the production volume increasing, the safety incidents are also increasing. But this part which is over here, which is which doesn't make much sense. I don't know what is happening here. See, the sum of production volume and the sum of uh, safety incidents diverge the most when the safety incidents is at 1. Here, they diverge from here to here. Now, this part is not uh, understandable or something else is happening here. But over here, as uh, we are increasing the production volume, uh, our safety inc incidents are also increasing. Now, what I also did was I rep uh, de replicated with the same thing with the number of maintenance hours. Now, this also has the same thing as the maintenance hours are increasing. Now, there is something production volume is increasing, maintenance hours are increasing and safety incidence is also increasing from here. Now, this part, the first end, uh, it's, uh, it's not something that I can clearly. The next thing I want to understand is energy consumption and energy efficiency. Now, first thing first what I understood is the average is around 2.99 and the average energy efficiency 0.3 so with respect to this 0.3 so energy is ranging from 1000 to 5000 and uh, efficiency is upon 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 now I have, once I created a line chart here now it's a pretty much uh, a, a when you add a trend line to it so it's pretty much straight so and it is decreasing so as energy consumption is uh, getting more and more the efficiency is decreasing that is what we can understand here and then one another thing I wanted to understand is as the production volume increasing is the energy consumption increasing or decreasing uh, this is very interesting because as you can see when the production volume is the highest it has some of energy consumption is less so it is better to do more volume which is better to do more volume uh, for less energy to be consumed in the next one I want to understand the additive manufacturing processes now the average is around 300 uh, the uh, additive manufacturing cost and the uh, average additive mono processing time is around 5.4 hours now it ranges from 10, 1 to 10 hours and uh, the cost is around averaging around 300 now what my assumption was the additive my process time as it is increasing my additive manufacturing cost should be significantly increasing but that is not the case which is kind of counterintuitive to what I was thinking so this is what I understood now at the end the one thing that is increasing my defect status because that is one major thing trying to understand is what is affecting my defect the first thing first is the maintenance hours if it is more than 10 it is affecting us uh, way higher that means you need to decrease the maintenance hours in order to decrease the maintenance hours one assumption that I am making in they are using old machines so if they buy a new machines the maintenance hour decreases and it will be less than 10 which increases the productivity as well as the defect status will be reduced productive volume more than 802 the production volume should also be around 8 or 800 so that you have a less defects and the productivity will be also higher now this might happening because uh, if there is more pressure on it the defect status will the defects will be increased the workers will not perform well other than that i don't see much uh, different things that are affecting the defect status hope you like the video now this video was predominant to understand the defects and what is causing those defects if you like the video please like and share and if you want to understand more things in terms of uh, how mechanical engineers are using uh, data analytics keep following bk engineering